David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I always enjoy checking out new things in relation to the fountain pen hobby. I'm one who will take a chance on something new to see if it's worthwhile. Sometimes it is, and other times it isn't. A while back, I saw a pen with a magnet filling system and was really intrigued. What I have for you today are two different fountain pens with magnet filling systems, one of which works extremely well, and one of which, well, without mincing words, in my opinion, is a complete failure. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of these pens, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about them. I'll show you some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. The first magnet filler I became aware of was a pen from Pen BBS called the 487. I saw a couple reviews of it, but was, it was rather difficult to obtain. Um, you could only purchase it from a specific site in Japan who very rarely had them in inventory. I tried for a while to get my hands on one, but was unsuccessful. But then two things happened. One is they became available on Etsy, so I was able to purchase one. And at the very same time, a viewer by the name of Spencer uh, sent one to me for review as well. So now I have two in my possession, these right here. They are essentially the same pen, but uh, this one here has a bit of black ribboning on it. Uh, I was excited when I received these pens, but I quickly became frustrated and annoyed with both of these pens. In order to get a closer look at the filling system on these two pens and for me to explain my issues with the design, please join me over here at camera two. Okay, here we have the two Pen BBS 487 models. We have the clear demonstrator and then the one with riveting. Uh, actually, with these, all of these pens, you need to be careful because the magnets that are in these pens kind of really attract to anything metal. So uh, if you have this near any other pens, not just that it's not attracting the magnets to each other, it's just attracting to metal. If you have this near any other metal pen, it's gonna to attract to it. Or if you are using it with electronics that might be sensitive to magnets, uh, using pens around those might be something that you wanna uh, pay attention to and be careful with. Not necessarily being super close around to it, but you wouldn't wanna set it down on a, maybe something, a screen that is is affected by magnets at all. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at this model here. Now, to show you a bit of the filling system, you can see here that there is a magnet in the end. Now, this is, would be a piston filler, and there is a magnet here on the end of the cap. So, in theory, the idea is that you put this magnet onto this magnet, and then you pull it down and operate the piston. But as you see, there is a problem. This magnet is not strong enough to move the piston. When I try to do it slowly, it just will not do it. Sometimes if you move it side to side and try to get it loose, that works, but it just will not work. So I actually contacted uh, the seller and said, hey, this thing does not work. And so they suggested to go ahead and open it up and take the uh, piston out and then go ahead and use uh, some silicone grease on the inside. And so on this particular model, I did. Uh, I put a fair amount of silicone grease on the inside and let's see how that works. And as you can see on this model, it still does not work. Basically, the magnet that's on the end of the cap is not strong enough to do its job. Now, if I use, I just have a, a big magnet here. If I use one of these magnets, you can see if the magnet was stronger, we'll go ahead and just do that. You can see how this actually does work. And what you do is then you, I'm not even gonna bother inking this particular model up, but you go ahead and stick it in the ink and then you raise this up. And when you do so, then ink will be pulled into the barrel. But the fact that the, um, that the magnet that they, that they provide with this pen will not do the job uh, uh, is just basically inexcusable. Now, once I've loosened it up, it will work for a little bit using the magnet provided. But if you can tell, if you go too fast, it becomes a little unhinged. But then if I let this sit for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, when you go to use it again, it will not work and become stuck. So 
I, I think that you know eventually this pen is just going to be an eyedropper and you're not even going to be using the magnet filling system. So I think that when you produce a pen that has that you basically contend is something special and has a very cool filling system, you think that you would make sure that that filling system works. And on this pen, in my experience over two different pens and also reading the experience of a lot of people, other people online, for me, I can't get it to work. So I really don't recommend this pen at all. Okay, so the pen BBS 487 is obviously something I would not recommend you purchase, but there is hope for the magnet filling system. It wasn't long after I received the 487s that I became aware of another pen maker, a gentleman by the name of Gianluca Baracani, who resides in the Apennines, Italy area, a small town between Florence and Bologna. Uh, he is the man behind the pen company Pediamonte Pen Design. One day during his job of installing medical devices, uh, he was using a magnetic pneumatic piston and got the idea to implement something similar into a fountain pen. So, I was anxious to check it out in the hopes that it would cleanse the bad taste out of my mouth from the pen BBS. And this is what he came up with. This is the Pediamonte Lisa. Uh, it comes with this very neat magnetic display. You could have it on your desk like this, but I've actually found myself uh, storing it in this orientation. Uh, you don't get the cool gravity defying effect, but it just has a little bit of a smaller footprint. Uh, this pen is named Lisa because in an Italian fountain pen forum, Gianluca asked people to guess the new filling system that he invented, and a girl named Lisa provided the correct answer. So she has been honored by having the pen named after her. It's made from an acrylic resin called Aspen and has a very large ink window in the barrel. Let's take a look at the cap. On the end of the pen, it is engraved with its number. This one is number 43. The cap is straight with a flattened portion containing the company name. Now, this is a clipless design. Uh, this flat portion will prevent the pen from rolling around on your desk if you like set it down directly on this flat portion. But if you set it down in another orientation and it starts to roll, the flat portion really doesn't stop it at all. Um, I'm not sure if it was intended to be a roll deterrent or not, but um, I do like that element of the design as opposed to having just a rounded cap. There is a medium sized step down to the barrel, which is straight until you get to the end, which um, is almost imperceptibly concave. It's a very subtle indentation. The cap twists off in a rotation and a quarter, and underneath we have a two-tone stainless steel number no. six Yovo nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the section is concave, and that transitions into the cap threads, then there's a straight portion, and then a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. The section is a decent thickness, and I find it really comfortable in the hand. Um, the pen does have a considerable amount of weight in the very back of the pen, but I find that portion to really rest directly on my hand. So even though the center of balance on this pen is further back than on most pens, uh, it doesn't feel back weighted when it's in my hand. Uh, and the cap is not designed to post. Okay, in order to get a look at this magnet filling system on this pen and to see if it has a better design than the first one I showed you, let's go back to camera two after some measurements. Okay, let's take a look at this Pediamonte Lisa. First of all, this is a cool display. You can see it's just hanging there. Um, and we'll go ahead and take this off. And this one, in comparison, it does have a ball. It's a uh, larger ball that's in here, and there's also a spring that's in here. And the magnet that you use is not located in the cap, but comes off the end right here. So you can operate this, and you can see that it operates very, very easily. Uh, and then you can see that there is a spring here in the end. There, it's a little bit harder to see. But then when you bring this up, you can tell that the ball actually gets pulled back and that this is a fairly strong magnet. And you don't feel, when this is attract, attached to the end, you, I mean, if you really hit it, it's gonna come off, but in normal use, that's not gonna come off. 
Uh, and so you can see that it just works very easily. And this magnet is strong enough to work just fine. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons, and then we'll go ahead and ink this pen up for a writing sample. So here we have the Pediamonte Lisa. Uh, here it is with a Twisby Eco. It's very similar in size. And here it is with a Lamy Safari, and then also a Pilot Metropolitan. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red and a Pelican M805, and then also a Pilot Custom 823. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Safari, and here it is with the 805 of the Pelican, and then here it is with the Pilot Custom 823. Okay, let's go ahead and ink this pen up. And what I'm gonna be using is a new ink that I picked up recently, which is the Diamine Bloody Brexit. So in order to ink this up, what we do is we take off the end and then we go ahead and bring this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and insert it into the ink. And I know it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, But if you do it slowly enough, then you can see that um, we actually got a really decent fill out of that. I will say that when you were filling it up, you needed to be a little bit slower pulling it back because there is going to be some suction involved. Um, but if you took your time in pulling it back, you could see I got a very full fill on that. Okay, now we have the Pediamonte. Lisa. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using that I showed you is Diamine Bloody Brexit. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a really nice kind of a saturated blue with a, uh, a purplish sheen to it. So, um, so far I'm really liking this ink. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. This Yovo nib is very nice, um, that I find that this medium nib is very generous. You're not gonna get a lot of line variation out of here, but the ink flow is very generous on here. And in regard to reverse writing, it's a little scratchy, but it gets the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, It keeps up just fine. So here we have the Pediamonte Lisa. Um, as you could tell between the comparisons of this pen as well as the Pen BBS, this is a pen that I would strongly recommend and the Pen BBS would be one that I would not. Um, I'll put a link in the notes below, but these pens are only available through the Pediamonte website. Um, this particular model, depending on the materials, retails for around $250 to $275, which for a bespoke pen with a very unique filling system and a unique look to it, I think is a very reasonable price. So it's something that I feel is worthwhile checking out. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.